Hello, and welcome to the After Show Afterthoughts. We're here with Melba Tolliver. We were talking on the Lenny Gaffey Straight No Chaser two-year anniversary uh, program about both of us thinking about teaching and the importance of it and my concern about students who are matched with the right kind of teacher. And I think that's why there are a lot of teachers now who, um, who focus on special ed because they there weren't when I was in school. There were no special ed teachers. There were no teachers who had that understanding. Either you were bright or you weren't. And that was the end of it, you know. And then they categorized you down the line. You're in the honor society. You're not in the honors. You're in the next thing. And, and then you went all the way down. And so they, they put everybody in a box. And I don't think that that's not what I, that's not what I thought teaching was supposed to be about. So that's why I wanted so much to be a teacher. But Melba. Yes, darling. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me anything technical. You know better than that. No, I'm not. We are here. I mean, We've got all the technical things me. fixed. <laughs> now, what, tell me this. I don't recall this painting behind you. What is this painting huh? behind you? What is the this painting, painting that, yes, behind you? The that painting that's a work by a local artist. Curly Holton, who taught at Lafayette. He has oh. a studio, and I was introduced to him by another of our mutual friends, um, Ethel. Introduced Ethel. Me to him. Of course, Ethel. Why, why, Ethel. I, I, you know, why would I even bother to guess? Of course it was Ethel. Yes. Ethel Drayton Craig. Yes. It's beautiful. I don't recall it. I don't recall. But you have a wall of, of wonderful artwork that's that's there you know I, just just talking about you know we were talking off camera about people who inspire and my family was a great inspiration for me every every member joanne um my mother and father my grandmother who thought never saw me sing and never heard me sing a note never saw me act one piece of dialogue when she would tell people oh my grandbaby is a star, you know. And I said, well, you, know, <laughs> you never, oh, of course you are. You're a Godfrey. You're a... <laughs> my, my mother's big thing used to be to my sister and me when, when uh, like uh, her, her sisters and brothers and, and, and their children got together at Thanksgiving. And usually we went to their place in someplace in Cleveland. My mother's big thing was, and now I don't want you all showing out. Don't be up there showing out. And if she said, if she gave us a look or she said, Connie, Melba, take a seat. <laughs> the, the look was the thing. I mean, I remember coming home after filming whatever television show I was filming, you know, whatever. That was before I had a series. So I was guest artist on one of the popular shows, whether it was 227 or Amen or something, thinking I was coming home and my parents, you know, they so they had all their friends look and everything. So I'm coming home for Thanksgiving. I get there. I'm flying in because, you know, I had to stay late, you know, so I just get there, get home. I'm there the day, change, Carl, and I come to my parents' home and I'm thinking I'm going to be, you know, you, you know whole court. My mother hands me the tray and say, okay, now go ahead and, and serve the food. I said, what? She said, I mean, you know, that's what you did last year before you went to LA and got on television. <laughs> so this is what you're going to do this year. There are the hors d'oeuvres. Go and around. And that way, also, you can go and say hello to every single person because I told them that you were going to be here. So go and do what you She gave me that tray. And that's what I did. And then after that, I went and served whatever it is my mother told me to serve. It was her way to ground me. Took my don't show out. You know, I don't care what your accomplishments are. And you should have those accomplishments because you work hard. But that doesn't make you special. Mm -hmm. You're not special in that way. You're not special. Right. You're exactly who you are. You treat everybody the same way you treat, treated them before you did all of those things. And that's what I try to do now. You know, I try to do now. I'm always so very, very impressed when people remember my work and I go, boy, you got a good memory, you know, or something like that. But uh, until, unless somebody's openly rude, 
and they mean to be rude, then then they get the Maggie Godfrey. Now there's there's a side of her that she, mm -hmm. she was like a lioness. I didn't even get a chance to defend myself. She said, she said, would you say for my job? <laughs> and it was on. It was on. <laughs> um, but when you talk about mentors in your life, what, they they come. You say when teachers appear, when the what is it? When the student when the is ready, school teachers school appear. Teacher right? appears. Yes. So it may not be that that teachers are are, are teachers in the way you and I were talking about it earlier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People who studied how to be educators and so on. But the person who has a lesson, who has something to teach you. They show up, do you know? And, and yeah. how, who, in your life, who was that? Who was that? Give me one. Give me one person who that was in your life. What was who that? Who showed up? Give me one example of the, a person who in your life just showed up when you needed to be taught something. Well, I I think I might have mentioned this to you before that uh, LeBron James, for instance, the basketball player. Uh, I he, uh, the first what I first knew about him was that he's from Akron, Ohio, same hometown as me. But when I uh, when I started really paying attention to his career in the NBA, and I just saw how this this kid who, ever since he was in high school, maybe in, even in the tenth grade, maybe he was only in the ninth grade at this Catholic school in Akron, and and professional basketball scouts were scouting him at that young age and how he is and and with all the attention that's been on him from such an early age how he has managed to be so stable and so grounded in the midst of all these the celebrity and what celebrity can do to people. It just mm -hmm. have them go off crazy with yeah. too much of everything. And mm -hmm. he, and what he's done in in operating these schools, the promise I promise schools in Akron for kids, if they will do right, do the right thing and go, they'll be able to go on to the University of Akron. And now he just recently had formed some sort of partnership with um, who's the coffee Starbucks. Mm -hmm. So he has this whole setup where these young people are going to work in a Starbucks situation, but they're going to learn the hospitality industry. He has this center for where it's going to be their parents can be part of it and learn about managing their finances. I wrote about him 10 years ago only because I was I was so impressed that he was in his 20s and I was already in my 70s. And I said, I, I wrote this piece about him being a role model for me. I said, for me, somebody who's old enough to be his granny, but I am so impressed with his persistence, his practice and his patience. And that was 10 years ago I wrote this piece for the Akron Beacon Journal. But recently when he broke the scoring record of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and there was a big fuss about it and all that, I saw a photo of him in this sharp suit and he had a lapel pin that said, be present. And he was talking about being present back then, which is so Zen and so Buddhist. It's like, be present in the present moment. In the moment. In oh. the moment. You know, when you say, I remember being younger and wondering why we didn't have more people who were doing that in the industry. That, you know, I, I am so happy to hear because I didn't know all of the things that he was doing. I'm so happy to hear that there are more people who are reaching out. A lot of them are sports figures who are reaching out and giving back to the community who are creating opportunities for young people who are creating the distraction of being positive for young people 
and -hmm. giving them incentives to go on and do something with their lives, whether it's university, whether it's uh, technology, all of those things. I am so very proud because when I was younger, I, I used to think, you know, in my industry, and there were some efforts, why don't we have a, a studio with all these stars that we have that 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 uh, aids those of us who are starting to show us how, what to do, how to how to um, how to succeed even before you come into. Why isn't there a preparatory school somewhere? Why isn't there a preparatory theater somewhere? And we still haven't achieved it. I mean, you know, in in, in one building, I think that there are wonderful performers who have donated millions and millions of dollars. To, to charities that they're caring about. And I think that that's wonderful. But to know that this person, this one person is creating an avenue for ach achievement of young people specifically to help them, that's a, I, I think it's just amazing. I think it's just an amazing thing. And I wish, I, I wish there were more and I wish it was more there were more of those kinds of people in my industry who did it for young actors who come in and they could be more grounded. And I think that the world started and ended with them mm -hmm. and, and really appreciate all the people who did all the things for them before they came in, before they were born. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there, there is, there are, there are young people who do, and I'm not going to say that they are not, they are. And I'm very proud of them, but there there needs to be more, and there needs to be a push for that, to to preserve their legacies. And um, we don't have it enough in our business, I don't think. I well, don't think. again, I I think the uh, the seduction of people to become that can have they can be in situations where they're seduced into this celebrity being and and uh, it's just so corrosive uh oh it is it it, uh, it is it it uh and it's just all about your self self success success oh, oh. that's self success it's all about just you know I, and you know we all know people who are obsessed with it. I try to stay away as much as I possibly can from them and stay and try to gravitate toward the genuine people who are interested in just moving forward and progression and, and being, as you say, present in the moment. Because, you know, a lot of that is what am I going to achieve in five years that I've got to do? I've got 20 million that I've got, I want to achieve before I'm 40, you know? And, and but what are you doing now? Is, is it all just to achieve that? And this and this, and to achieve that, you're not caring about anything else but that achievement. So everything else, nothing else gets any attention whatsoever. You know? Um well, I, I guess that, it, it takes it, all kinds. Be building some institution, something that's gonna last way the time, way past your time on the planet. Again, I, 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 there, and there, there are people I read about who, who are doing those kinds of things. I keep going back again to, uh, to LeBron because I, again, I'm interested in sports, especially basketball. I'm interested in, in his still connection to Akron, Ohio, and what he's going to do next. Because one of the things he did initially was to bring his homeboys together to represent him. He was he he was establishing agents who could handle the business side of sports and and he he must have had in his head if other people can learn to do this work so can the people so can you yes and so can and why not bring bring yeah. these people who okay. I've known all my life up there and let them benefit rather yeah. than let someone benefit who's, who's are getting like 10 15 20 percent of the end mm -hmm. of these multi-million dollar contracts exactly you yeah. know where that would only be available to people who were established in our business and uh who then um were only interested in you when you were under certain status whereas your friends 
were interested in you. Like I said, before you had any talent, you know, they kind of were your friends. And then they saw the talent and they said, yeah, well, if you got to go and practice, go ahead and practice. All right, we'll see you later. You know, that didn't discourage you. They didn't try to take that away from you. You know, um, they didn't make fun of you because you were practicing, you know. Um, it's, uh, that's a gift. He's a gift. He's a gift. And, and I, I think there are many more gifts. What we were talking Absolutely. about before, like with you and Lloyd, that Lloyd saw something in you that was not necessarily what you were aiming for, but he, he yeah. saw something and something that he could bring forward in you that would live way past his lifetime and past your own. Yeah. And that yeah. is not just what you would do on stage, but your vision, your your ability, he could see in you your ability to see in other people how to bring people's work forward to and, and that and that's it it is important to me. You know, people say to me, Well, Lenny, what are you gonna do? And I am. I mean, I have not stopped singing and or, or having the desire to sing or have the desire to be on stage but i also see so many so many people who i think you know deserve the ability to have their vision nurtured and not and don't have the opportunity the opportunities are not there in other categories now i'm not you know i'm not anybody when it comes to doing really making anybody well known but i can bring people to attention a little bit and then they can go from there that's you know that's been important to me that there are people who never get that attention i i remember getting into the business working with people who i thought were incredibly talented but the ducks didn't fall in a row you know there was nobody who say no 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 you need to do this over here and then let me you know show you this over there whereas i had that for me and I couldn't bring them over because it was just being designed for me and I thought when I get an opportunity I want to be able to help those people who don't have that mm. you know necessarily who don't get that light that they deserve and they may not stay on you all the time but you deserve a bit of the spotlight in your life mm -hmm. so <laughs> there we've dissected me enough now I'm <laughs> No, we haven't. I, I still want to know what there is about you that I can uh, pick up on so I can learn to deal with the technology better. Because as I'm looking at all the, the parts that you put together and I'm saying, gee, whiskers, Mel, but if you could just do this, maybe <laughs> not like the dancing. <laughs> well, I'm not, you know, I mean, you know, but I, I can see how you but, thought that, you know, maybe there would be some regular dancing there and I could I can squeeze through that. When he started getting technical to those dolls who were dancer dancers, that and for you to say, you know what, I'm still gonna stay. Now I have to tell you, I would probably say, Well, odds are I'm gonna get fired anyway. So let me just go ahead and take this other job. And then the man got, you know, amazing that decision making power is something that I see in you that I don't necessarily have. So we all have things that we don't know the other person has. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Me, you know, my father used to call me a technical brain, or, you know, computer brain. And that was before computers really, but I could, you know, figure out how to do things, figure out the VHS, figure out how do you figure out, why do you know to, to turn it this way and turn it that way? I remember getting the, the reel to reel tape recorder because I other kids wanted dolls. I wanted a reel to reel tape recorder. And I got a reel to reel tape recorder. And I started recording um, conversations my grandmother had. In that. And I'm so sorry those tapes are not here. Anyway, I said, I took it down south and recorded the stories and everything else. Um, a reel to reel. I remember that. And then I would lose it because I didn't know how to find it. You know, you had to mark it. I didn't know how to mark it and time it. And I was a kid wanting all of those kind of things. So I guess it, it, there was an indication back there that I was fascinated by it. Mm. It fascinates me, I think. What I don't know it fascinates me. It may it frustrates I think other people, but it fascinates me. I kind of go, well, I'll just figure it. Out. Keep on working until I figure it out. That's all. 
I, I always think, though, that there's a Rosetta Stone. There's some piece that if I could just understand that piece, everything else would fall, in fall into place. place. But it's it's true, though. It you know, it, it was it was for me, it was understanding that no matter what device you are on, basically, all of these devices are made the same. They're copyrighted the same. Hmm. Their, their fail safes are the same. They're, where they have the information, how you you end a, a, a conversation, how you X out something is usually in the same place. You could be on a totally different device, but basically if you take that, what you learn on the device that you've learned it on and go to another device, it's, it's going to be the same, maybe a little different, but the reasoning is all the same. It's not that different. How you ask, how, do you go to the search engine? Every search engine serves you, service, services you the same way. It's how you put in your search. Your wording is very important. How specific, well, being specific. Yes, but that's like in journalism. <laughs> if you, the question is, is, is it, it the 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 question you ask is going to get a certain answer? So you're saying if you put in the right thing, <laughs> you will get what you're. You, you, what you're I mean, doing. and and the limitation is remembering that it is a machine that is built by man, so it, it has a limitation. It can only give you what was put into it. Right, right. So right. it's not endless in its in its education and. It's, it, you know, it's all, it, most of the things that people, they live by Google and Google says, Google says, Google says, but Google is saying what man has put in it. Google is not his brain. Google is, you know, what has been submitted to it. So it's understanding that, I think, that, that helps me when I get a new device started up and um, see if I can figure it out because there are no more instructions. I mean, but you, you have another, to go on the website and get an instruction. That I That's think boring. about you, Lenny, too. I think another uh, uh, characteristic, character trait of yours that helps you, you don't mm -hmm. seem to be easily frustrated to say, oh, I give up. <laughs> I, I, no, it, it takes me a while. It takes me a while. It does take me a while. I mean, when I'm looking for something in my house, I will look for it for almost an hour. And then I go, you know what? I'm going to eventually find it. I had to learn to give it up. But okay. I, I don't give up easily with other things. No, I, I don't. Yeah. Well, um, that's another just... important lesson, knowing when to let go of something, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and just it not... is. But last week, when I was having difficulty trying to do this, and you said, okay, we'll try this. And then, okay, let me do it on, do this on the phone. And let me do this till you find you worked it out. I was of no help because. Well, but you know, I mean, but I, I have, I, I've been doing this now for a while and I've had experiences where sometimes things like that can happen. Um, I've been knocked off. I mean, right now I don't do these two things on one computer anymore. I don't, I don't do blog talk the way I used to do it on a computer. I do it through my phone now because it can knock me off. But now I know how to get back on through my telephone. So I thought, well, why even bothered with the but computer? Then, I was just started with the telephone. Then, you know, you talk as though that's that's the way it should be. But when you run into somebody like me, it's not. I can't. I I don't. My mind doesn't work. That well, it doesn't. Yeah. Well, you know, up. that's because you, I don't have not, practice in doing that. Maybe and that it's repetition. It's just repetition. It really is. It's like I was telling Carl. He was he was you know learning how to uh, get a, a log onto a new device that he had gotten himself, and he and he stopped. He was trying to use it because he was frustrated. I said, okay, so we're gonna write down each step, and you're gonna do each step, and you're gonna uh, you're gonna do it three times a day. And he went, what? I said, no, you're gonna do it three times a day. And I said, and then, you know, all of a sudden, I would I would turn or like. I would ask him what his password was, or we'd be doing something in a conversation, and I'd say, "And what's your password again?" And he, and he, he, he could remember. And I tell him the third time he remembered. I said, "Now you remember it. 
it's all about it's all about repetition. It's yeah. all about repetition. If I don't, I mean, I I use a program once or twice a year when I do my uh, salon, and it always takes me about a half an hour to remember how I did it the year before. I like oh, pull out the old hour? Movies, about oh. half an hour to an hour. Yes. You're too much. <laughs> Only a half. It takes it takes you no. Half but I deal with. I mean, I deal with, with, with these um these these technical people who come in to my home. And, you know, I go, I can't do this. And they go, duh, 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 and it's done. And I go, what did you do? Here's the difference. I make them show me what they did. Mm. That's what I started. And, and every time it was the same reasoning that they would use to get the answer. Mm -hmm. Problem was different, but getting the answer, getting to the answer was almost exactly the same way. Mm. And, and that, that's what made, I said, oh, so you get it the same way, even though even though the issue is different. I see. I see. I'm more like Carl. I'm gonna have to start uh, writing stuff down and. Oh, absolutely. You if you write it down, and then you, you you know have them slow down and say, "How did you do that again? Let me see it." Yeah, you know, and yes, and and I ask them when they come, technicians when they come. I say, "Okay, no, what? How did you get that? How did you get that?" Well, I went back. I said, where did you go? Go back. Go back and refresh the page. And let me see where you went. You know, I want to go see where you started it. And I go, oh, I see. I see. And I see a similar pattern. Mm -hmm. The pattern again is, oh, you go back and you go to this. Oh, I see. You go back to settings. And everything originates in settings. And all your answers are in there. And all your answers are in download. And, uh, and understanding your, your, um, uh, your hard drive. I didn't even know. How to how to maneuver in hard drive, and then I got lost in hard drive, and it's just like anything. When you get lost, you don't get lost again. You find you find yourself out. You don't get you don't make that mistake again. And okay. I now I know how to maneuver the difference between documents and 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 uh, um, downloads and how to make those things work for me and the quick access and all of those things and the duplications, all of that. It took. It took a long time to make sense. It has to make sense in your head. That's all. Okay. All right. I, I all right. Me. Well, <laughs> now that I've given my technical lesson in this artistic, <laughs> but artistically, it's the same way for me. You know, the the issues that I have artistically, um, I solve them. There, there's no, there's no, um, uh, there's no answer that you can't solve in uh, artistically. You just have to refer back to some of the things that you've experienced in life. And for me, that's, you know, those are um, recalling things as, as, as an artist when I'm directing that I needed to, you know, call upon. And I asked the artist then, you know, well, how do you feel about this? And how, it's just, making it make sense in your head and finding that answer when it makes sense. Yeah. Well, that's one how I, thing, last thing I want to share with you before before we go. I just okay. got a, um, a text from a friend of mine who mm -hmm. is, and you've met her, Cheryl. She, the, she's a physician. Yes, yes. Met when you guys were helping with something. She is in Thailand now, and she sent me a picture of being in a lounge and the singer was just about to start singing an Etta James number. And it reminded me, uh, one of the first times that I was outside the United States, I was in Morocco and uh, in, in Rabat. And on the drive from the airport to the hotel, the radio uh, driver had the radio on and they were playing an Aretha Franklin. And that was the first time that I had a real appreciation for our culture affecting how it was so affecting or um, admired by people Enamored. outside mm -hmm. of the United States. It was yes. like, of course, mm -hmm. I know a piece of Franklin, but these people, well, no, <laughs> they they know it almost better than we do. I, that my experience in Europe was I didn't realize the appreciation of music that is aesthetically American. Mm -hmm. Because our our music is is it's it's the uh, originally uh, it's uh, American origin, 
and how much that is appreciated and duplicated. Yes, and appreciated. It, and I'm really enamored. I mean, when they found out that you can sing, and I mean, that you can really sing. I mean, they know people who could carry a tune. But when they find out you can sing, no, you don't have, you know, when, when you say, well, no, I don't sound like anybody else, but I sound like myself. And then they hear that, they have an appreciation for a stylist mm -hmm. that we don't have mm -hmm. here. Here, it's like, well, who do you sound like? And everybody has, everybody hits those notes and and and, and stays on them forever. In every show, in every program, in every vocal show, that's that's the standard here. Um, it can be it, it can be accepted even in Europe because those shows are there. But when you go into the people who are genuinely into music, they are into people really owning their own style and and uh, and, and and being genuine in the purpose in their own style. Not you know oh yeah I can sound like this person or I'm you know I can hold a note like this person. You know, but that's, yeah, but it is, we are far more um, respected, um, appreciated in the arts somewhere else than we are here. Mm. Yeah, and duplicated. It's good to find that out, though. I mean, to good. To, it's good to have that as, as a real experience because mm -hmm. I just took it for granted. I never thought about it, really. Until no, I, you don't. You don't. Right. Well, you know, I mean, we're, we're, you know, over here, we're no big deal. We're, we're no big deal. We're no big deal. Where you realize how a big deal is when you see an Asian person come over and try and sing respect like Aretha. So you go, <laughs> okay, what happened here? What? Oh, I mean, or try, you know, you, you see the young young girls in South America singing Whitney Houston, you know, I mean, note for note, lick for lick, and you realize how much they worship that whole sound. Mm -hmm. And here, you know, we listen to them, these these wonderful voices. We miss them, but, you know, we kind of go, yeah, that's who, that's who we are. We take it for granted. That's what you hear in the neighborhood. That's what you grew up with. You know, Luther Vandross, Whitney Houston, you know, Dan Warwick, all those brilliant, brilliant artists. There, they they are the standard by which they judge whether or not you can sing. It's uh, amazing that the art world is an amazing thing, and that's why so many artists, you know, in the twenties went to Europe and stayed because they were appreciated there. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. where they had to struggle here, they couldn't get a job there. They could make a good living there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, all right. I'm now squeezed every bit of of inch out of the turn up that I can. <laughs> so, what is it? Three more, three more episodes, and you'll hit a hundred. Mm -hmm. Uh, two more. Two, two more. more. This is ninety-eight. Oh. Mm -hmm. This is ninety-eight. This is number ninety-eight. Two more episodes, a hundred, the century mark. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh we. Well, you know, I mean, I and and, and it was I didn't realize it until Blog Talk started because they start, you know, they they give you the number. And at one point in time, I saw the number and it was going to sixty, and then it was going to seventy. And got and when it got to eighty eight, I went eighty eight, eighty eight. You know, I said and that's when I started realizing it's coming to that time. And uh, yeah, and you know, <laughs> we will end the season, I think, in. Um, uh, I think it'll be 102 or 103. And then we'll pick it up in the fall. Um, and, and we'll see how far we get. If people still want to see and listen, and you know, it's been my joy. Yeah. What next? I, 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 I won't be surprised, whatever it is. I'll say, well, that's many. Oh, well, you know, I'm, you know I've, I've got a couple of things that I want to do, and it may it may delay this because it it it, it needs a, a little bit more attention. But I've got a couple of things that I haven't done for a while that I'd like to do, and uh, and I always would like to keep this the possibility of this always available. Yeah, good for so, you. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Yeah. Who knew? All right, All right my friend. All right. I'm going to end this for us, and then you stay on for a little bit.
But uh, I want to thank everyone for listening to our conversation here on the After Show Afterthoughts. And we've talked about everything possibly under the sun. <laughs> But okay. thank you for hanging in and, and being with I us. I love the open and, music too. I'm tapping my foot for the uh, for the uh, straight note chaser. Oh, you mean fever? Yes. Oh, but anyway, okay. Thank you. All right. I'm, I'm all, right. all right. And thank you so much, Melba. I mean, thank you always for being so encouraging, always thinking about me, always having something for me to think about. You know, Lydia, I would, we'd be talking and before you go, there's this program that I've been did it up. always something that moves me forward. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. Bye, you all. I'll see you on the radio. Hold on, Melba. I'll see you in a minute. Hold on. Bye-bye.